Hello everybody, let's talk about uh, Mountain Blade 1.80. Now I've recently done a review of 1.72, gives us a baseline to work from. So we'll go with that. Now in 1.72 you couldn't really become king without a great deal of effort. I found myself being locked into multiple wars, unable to expand out which was constantly under attack. And I, I, I mean, to become king in the first place, I had to constantly attack an empire, weaken it to the point where it couldn't defend its castles, and then take its castle. Trouble is, that weakened me instantly, and they managed to bounce back. Usually, a tactic I used to use was uh, capturing all the lords and locking them up, you know, and just not letting them go, but they'd escape occasionally. And in one particular game, I, um, I captured most of these guys' cast, well, men, stuck them in a castle, he kept recaptured the castle and released them all, and was back to full strength in seconds. So it was, it's very difficult, you know, to get going in 1.72, and the trade wasn't really that great either, because you used to think, well, that town is surrounded by uh, villagers that breed horses, so it should have a lot of horses, but that wasn't always the case. Um, you, never, you could never quite predict what they were going to sell. Now you can. Now what's around the cities, you know, you, you can, as usually what the city sells. So trading is much easier. It's, it, there's a lot more opportunities for profit now than there used to be. I mean, admittedly, when you're trying to make um, workshops, it's a lot harder because you haven't quite got that right. I mean, some of these uh, guides to 1.80 workshops are wrong <laughs> quite frankly they're absolutely wrong because in some cities they say yeah build one of these wool things or build one of these so and so things and then you get there and you find out you're not allowed to right so if you're not allowed to how do they know you could build one of them there if it's impossible to do it so yeah the game changes so frequently that a lot of these guys become out of date as soon as the next patch comes out so this is why i don't do these kind of guides for mountain blade but anyway um the trade itself is largely fixed, with the exception of the workshops and stuff like that. So you can make a lot of money that way. And with 1.8, right, this is a lot of what I've just said, you can run around the map trading. Right? It says that's a good way of making money. You can make a lot of money really fast that way. Um, you could also do missions. Now, you do little missions for people as you're travelling around. That increases your uh, reputation amongst various people and towns and stuff like that. It also earns you some money as well, so that's quite good. Most of these missions work fine now. They're not difficult to do, and uh, some of them take longer than others, but generally speaking, they're fun. One of the ones I like to do is to go, well, it's not really a mission. You just go into, uh, you go into the bar, you get all your, your companions to join you, then you walk around the town looking for these red flags. You hold down all look for red flags, and you go to red flags, then you kill off any of the gang, gangs there. Then you wait, and there's a big battle. Uh, now, your reputation in that um, area goes up considerably when you do that. You also get a nice bit of loot, although you don't want to sell the loot in that same town, because usually you get a better price if you take it somewhere else. One of them, you can actually, I think it, the, the profit you get from it can be as high as eight and 900 gold, you know, by taking it somewhere else. So, yeah, but that's a good way, just go around attacking gang members. Now, um, you couldn't really, you couldn't really do a lot of these things in 1.72 because the game hadn't matured enough, but now you can. So now you can do, do like um, the vassal route, where if you become a vassal, and you start doing well, they'll throw castles and towns at you. I mean, I got I got two towns and about five castles within the space of a single day's play, from starting from Nubi to, to that point, right? And um, I could have just declared myself a kingdom there and then, and thought, there you go, I've got two cities, I've got five castles, I'm a kingdom. And I would have annoyed the faction of where I was playing against, and that would have been it, I would have been well away. But I decided not to because, quite frankly, there's a little bit more to this game than just declaring yourself a kingdom once you've got a castle. Because everybody will attack you, you need to be strong. And um, the path to doing that is in 1.8 is a lot clearer. You can build up relationships with uh, various lords and ladies, which you have to do first. Do missions for them is a really good way of doing that. Right? So you're talking like a mission game, building up your relationship with all the lords and ladies before you do anything like that. And preferably you do that with lords and ladies in another faction 
before you actually um, declare a kingdom in a different faction because you're going to annoy everybody in that faction uh, they're going to attack you right and that you'll take a hit on your prestige you know some for so many percent you could get it high enough to take the hit and not notice i suppose but that's a lot more work but anyway it is possible now by going that route and taking on um, the vassalage section of becoming a um you know a, well, a, well a vassal then becoming a king by just grabbing all the castles and stuff around certain places until you own a whole area of the map trouble is the area i was in it was a bit poor it was um it was one of those areas where you couldn't really build a workshop and make it profitable because whilst workshops can be built they don't remain profitable forever they can close down and I found most of mine were being closed down or being taken over in various wars. So workshops weren't that reliable. Um, I think there's something you'd build, you know, later on in the game when you when you feel fairly confident that you own a town and you're never going to lose it. Because you can lose a lot of money doing that. Also, uh, you know, they're quite a lot more expensive now to build. So I think the workshop game still has somewhere to go or somewhere to go. But generally speaking, 1.8 is a hell of a lot better than uh, 1.72 was. And I would say that it is now possible to play the game to its full, even with the issues that I've mentioned. Now, why should you play Bannerlords? Well, Bannerlords is probably one of the best games on the market right now, in my opinion, second to none. So... If you haven't already experienced you know, the the war, the uh, Mountain Blade gameplay, right? Try it with Battle Lords, you won't regret it. See you in the next one.